listening to the Pharmacy Podcast Network. If you or your patients struggle with muscle cramps, spasms, soreness, or restless leg syndrome, you're going to want to hear about our non-opioid TheraWorks Relief. TheraWorks Relief is a clinically proven and published locally acting topical solution that prevents and relieves muscle cramps, spasms, and soreness in the legs and feet. In a research study including patients diagnosed with restless leg syndrome, TheraWorks Relief was shown to reduce symptoms commonly associated with accompanying RLS, including muscle cramps and spasms. Muscle cramps are reported as a side effect of hundreds of prescription medications, from intravenous iron sucrose and conjugated estrogens to statins and diuretics. By managing muscle cramps, TheraWorks Works Relief supports adherence, helping patients stay on important and often life-saving medications. TheraWorks Relief comes in an easy-to-use, fast-absorbing, non-greasy foam that can prevent muscle cramps and spasms with just a few simple applications a day. To learn more about TheraWorks Relief, go to theraworksrelief.com and click on the Healthcare Professional link. Here's the thing. You're busy. You're a professional. Maybe you're a pharmacist and you know you're capable of doing more, doing much more, and living a more organized, less stressful, purposeful, and freedom-driven life. Let's talk, let's share, and let's grow together as an industry, as healthcare providers, and as a better unified community. It may seem like some of these things don't easily fit together. After all, what do career coaching, marketing strategy, networking, and pharmacy have in common? Welcome to the Rx Buzz. Your host is a pharmacist, a wife, a mother, an entrepreneur, and a proven motivational career coach, Ashley Clevens Hayes. This is the Rx Buzz Podcast, a collaboration between Rx Ashley and the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Hello, Rx Buzz listeners. This is Ashley from Rx Ashley. And I just wanted to say thank you for joining us today. I have with me a really, really special guest today. Coincidentally, it just so happens to be one of my friends, one of my prior mentors turned really good friends now who I look up to and just absolutely love. Um, Dr. Melissa Durham is with me today. So welcome her, Melissa. Welcome to the Rx Buzz. Thanks, Ashley. I'm excited to be here. Me this too. Fun. So <laughs> this is fun. This is actually... This is now our eighth show, and it's getting to be way more fun than the beginning. It was nerve-wracking because I really didn't know what I was doing. But now, I feel like I got the hang of it a little bit, and we're getting great reviews from our listeners. So honestly, it's really fun to have you here. Um, This is episode number eight for us, and what I wanted to do transition into, into the next couple of shows is really talking about some of the things that I... I, I don't know, some of the topics that I've, that I've talked about on my blog, some of the things that I coach on is really building a mindset of grittiness and resilience in your personal life and in your professional career. And I thought Melissa would be a great person to talk about this too, because she not only preaches it in her personal life, but she also teaches it um, in, her, in her faculty position. So Melissa, tell us a little bit about yourself and talk to us a little bit about your passions. Sure. So I, I've been in the world of pharmacy for a solid 18 years. I started as a technician and up through an intern. And um, then after I graduated with my PharmD, I did a residency in community. And then immediately after residency became faculty, and I've been teaching at the USC School of Pharmacy for 10 years. And um, throughout that time, you know, it's not that I had the longest, most amazing, varied career compared to other people in our profession, but I feel that 10 years of teaching and working with students and residents and and going through all of the sort of maturation steps that you go through from your 20s and into your late 30s, I feel like I have gained like a really interesting perspective and insight and... um, I'm really excited to talk about the topics that you are focusing on your blog and your work. I think it's so important today to um, bring these things up and talk about things that people are uncomfortable talking about, like grit and resilience and failing and putting yourself out there. And I'm just excited to share um, my side. I think um, the reason why I wanted to bring you on today's show for a variety of reasons. Like I said, because when I was a student, you were faculty and I've always just really admired you and your work. And some of the things that you actually teach on 
And that is teaching students how to be gritty. And it's not always perfect and easy. Um, so I guess we can just jump in and maybe just go over the definitions of what you think it means to be, have grit and be resilient in your career or in your personal life. I mean, this could go float, float ways. Yeah. Yeah. I think the two are so interconnected because I mean, what have I, what I've experienced too in undergrad and I know you as well and other people that go through hardships, you know, while you're trying to do something difficult. I mean, how can you ever focus on getting your farm V or, or on work that's difficult when your personal life is like, you know, an air, a source of difficulty or depression or sadness. So the two like heavily, heavily go together. For it's sure. not, it's not one or the other. It's a whole person journey, no matter what. Yeah, I agree. Um, but yeah, so, so, so we, when we think of grit, grit's really just like the passion and perseverance to finish things through to the end, you know, to, to white knuckle it, to finish out those 20 units or to, you know, finish out that master's or that residency or whatever, when you know, it's really difficult. Mm -hmm. But the key too, is that there's passion there. You know, when you, when you don't have passion for what you're doing, then it's just grind. And I think a lot of us experience that in our work. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's, it's so important. What you're doing and coaching people too, is to help people find that passion. So, you know, the, it's grit and not grind Yeah. Um, in, in our daily work. Yeah, I agree. I um, think a lot of people are passionate about some of the topics, but they don't quite understand the grittiness involved in getting to the end point. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's true. I think that sometimes we pretty easily give up or we feel yeah. like there's other people who are going to swoop in and solve our problems for us. Um, not everyone is super skilled in self-management and self-awareness to actually know what they need to do to like reach their end goals. Um, so I, I think it, I think it's, that's definitely a piece of it. And then resilience too. resilience is able to like bounce back and like to maintain your mental health, you know, when you go through things that, you know, bring you adversity. Right. And, um, I don't know. I think we've all, we've oh, so many people, you, me, people we know, listeners can think of all kinds of examples of grit and resilience in their lives. But, you know, there's a downside to it, too. Can I talk about that? Do. Okay. <laughs> so, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, m maybe you can think of examples, too. But I can think of examples where I tried to be gritty and white knuckle through things um, that I really should have just walked away from right. to begin with. Right. Um, or I should have said no to begin with. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a whole nother conversation about bringing up when to say yes and when to say no about some topics. But, you know, I guess because you're so in the middle, you're immersed, you are surrounded by students in academia. And um, do you see it? Do you see grittiness there or I guess resilience there? Or what makes you so excited about this topic? And what makes you talk about this topic? Yeah, I think that, you know, there's a lot of discussion around grit and resilience with our current student generation. I think the millennials kind of get a bad rap of like not being gritty and lacking resilience for a variety of reasons. And so it comes up all the time in my educational sphere. Like how do, how do we teach people to be gritty? How do we teach people to be resilient? And honestly, you kind of can't. The only thing that you can really do to help people be gritty is to or to, or, or to, or to be resilient is to give them, to challenge them, to push them and to help them realize that they can accomplish these things or overcome these challenges and move on. I mean, I think the best, the best example of that, that I can think of was residency. I mean, I felt that that really built resilience in me because you're, you're a recent grad and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, here, do the work of a pharmacist and not just any old pharmacist, like a pharmacist who's like advanced and very established in their practice, their practice. Mm -hmm. like here, do a lecture to 200 students. You're like, what? And then you do it and you're like, oh, I can do this. Right. You know, and it's like, what's next? It's like, that was one of the biggest things I learned in residency was that everything hard ends, <laughs> right? You have one challenge before you, it's hard, but guess what? It ended uh -huh. and there's another one coming and that ended <laughs> too. And whether you, yeah. yeah, there's yeah. another way, everything hard ends and whether you like had an A plus performance or a C performance, 
it ended Mm -hmm. (laughs) and that's okay. You know, Mm -hmm. um, I used to, I had a really, I had a really challenging time about seven years ago. Professionally, I had a, I had a patient who divulged to me that she was being sexually abused by her caretaker Mm -hmm. and she hadn't shared it with anybody else like at all. And then I'm trying to think back to my training, like, uh, okay, what do I do? <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I, I yeah. know we were told what to do, but it's like when you're faced with that situation, like I don't, and to top it off, the guy was there and yelling at me and anyways. And, um, so I did what I had to do. I called, you know, everyone I needed to call. But then after that, I was like super affected by it. And it was really hard to like bounce back from that. So I had to seek counseling and do what I needed to do to emotionally overcome it. Um, But one of the things that my counselor taught me, he's like, because this is one of those examples where you're struggling personally and it affects you professionally. So I was having a hard time with work. Yeah. And he told me, he said, look, it's okay to have a C day. (laughs) We have our profession of pharmacy and others as well. We're such like a cohort of insanely high achievers and perfectionists. Mm -hmm. And we, and we use perfectionism as a lot of times as our, like our armor. Yeah. If you, if we want to, if we want to talk a little Brene Brown here, she talks about perfectionism as an armor. Yeah. Yeah. But we're big with that. And at sometimes you just have to just go look, you know what? That lecture I just gave wasn't great, (laughs) but I did it and it's okay. Move on. What's next? I mean, you said that it's kind of hard to teach the grittiness and the resilience. So how, how do you talk about it with the students? How can we talk about it with the audience and how to build it? Well, we focus a lot on self-awareness. You know, um, there's, you know, the variety of different inventories that are out there for you to like know yourself better from Myers-Briggs to StrengthsFinder to a learning styles inventory, the VARC inventory. So we focus a lot on like knowing yourself and we focus a lot on getting students to be reflective and getting skilled in reflection, being reflective practitioners. And so then that way, once they have this sort of sense of heightened self-awareness, if we can help sort of train them in those practices, I think it can help them um, in greediness and in, in, self, in, in resilience because you're faced with a challenge and you're like, okay, look, this is really challenging. This is really hard you know, this either plays to my strengths, it doesn't play to my strengths or fit in with like, you know, my skills. What do I need to do to get through it? Right. Or what do I need to do to walk away if that's appropriate too? So I think that's really the key to it is knowing yourself and knowing when it's the right time to push and when it's the right time not to. And then when is the right time to push and you push through it? There's lessons in that too. And being a reflective person saying, wow, okay, take a moment, reflect on this. I really did that. Right. You know, I met that challenge. I rocked it. I learned from it. What am I going to do next? Or if you fall short, I didn't rock it. I learned from it anyway. And what am I going to do next? Right. And what am I going to change about the next time I do something? Exactly. A lot of people struggle with because they just are like, well, I didn't do a good job, but I'm just going to keep going. And sometimes it's like, how do I know when to pivot and how do I know when to change? And and being self-aware, I think is one of those key pivotal points that if you know that you're not in the right direction, making a pivot or doing something different, although it might be uncomfortable, might be the best route. We're talking really like in a live terms right now. So <laughs> I recognize that I was like, maybe we can talk about more specifics. So question for, for you regarding like, how do you teach self-awareness? I know this is getting a little bit off track of grittiness and resilience, but I think being self-aware of your actions of how you communicate of how you elevate yourself and how you think about yourself is something that again, not a lot of people teach in pharmacy school, medical school, professional school, anything other than when you're out in the world, you're like, or out there kind of alone. (laughs) So yeah, I guess taking me for an example, like how can I be more self-aware? Um, well, I mean, I think I like, like I said, I think the reflective part is a huge part of it. I don't want to be repetitive, but, um, to, to have like, and, and what sucks too is that our lives are so busy, right? right? I mean, 
you're busy, you have a child, you have a full-time job, you're building a business, you know, I have two small children, it's crazy. So w- what we lack, I think a lot are like just space in our lives mm-hmm. to be able to breathe and have quiet moments to like think about what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, we, ha- we we're like, we're like head down chugging away for years and years. And all of a sudden you look up and you're like, well, sh- damn, I'm 38 years old. What just yeah. happened? Where did the last <laughs> 10 years go? You know, and luckily we have life milestones that kind of like mark time. Right. You know, oh, you know, I know when I had this kid, I know when I had to get, I know when I went on this trip. <laughs> yeah. You know, I remember that that it helps that, but a lot of times we just like chug away and don't even like look up. So if we can be be aware enough and build practices in our lives where we create space to have quiet moments with ourselves, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's on our commute, whether it's creating a morning practice of meditation yeah. or a morning gratitude practice or something like that, just so we can like have a minute to either to just like quietly reflect on what's going on in our lives. And I think that just in that, like unplugging, you know, Mm -hmm. after a certain hour every night, cutting out the chatter, cutting back on technology. I mean, these are all things that I bring up to students to help them in this process. Like there's so much input everywhere. What is their response to kind of some of these topics? I mean, I feel like a lot of students, new practitioners, residents are in this bubble of put your head down, stay focused, get good grades, get residency, get a job, stay in the job. When you're in the job, get to the next level, go to the, <laughs> build the, or, or climb up the career ladder. Even when you're at the top and you get there, people still are so in the bubble of go, 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 go. So when you are giving these types of conversations or lectures or presentations to students or, or you know, your, your speaking engagements, what is their response? I think it's mixed. Okay. Yeah. So in, in our program, we have 200 students. And of course there's the students who are like, Ugh, why are you talking to me about this foo-foo stuff when I need to be studying genetics? Yeah. You know, you get away from the woo-woo. Let's talk about genetics. Yeah. But, um, and I think that was more, I've been doing this, th- these particular types of topics for three years now in my courses. And um, it was more in the beginning. And I also think it was more about how, I presented it too. Like, actually, if I brought in out certain outside speakers, it wouldn't go over well. But if it came from me, if it came from like someone who's been mm. through it in a place of authenticity, yeah. it resonated a lot more with the students. Um, but it's becoming more and more accepted. Um, I'm not going to lie. I've been a little hesitant just from my own fears of like the type of institution I work at where, I mean, if, if I were do- doing what I wanted to do, I would start every class with a meditation. You know, but I'm like, (laughs) I know, but I'm like nervous about that because I'm nervous at how it'll be perceived at my place. But Hmm. the conversation is really changing. Yeah. I mean, I I mean, mean, education wise in general. Yes. I mean, depression is high. Burnout is high. 50% of Americans are quote unquote burned out from their job. Um, There's more, there's more, there's no, there's no hiding behind the truth of there's more pharmacy schools. There's more pharmacists graduating than ever before. Um, And I think the stakes are higher now. Yeah. And mental health is such a crazy issue with our students. Yeah. I mean, it's it in, in medical schools, pharmacy schools across the board, we have really, really high rates of depression, anxiety, sleep disorders. And it's like, it's almost like we have to change. We have to address these things. Um, or else we're going to have even more problems than we already have. Yeah, I agree. It's, 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 it's not that like, this is just a woo woo fun conversation. Like, no, like we actually have to do this. And, and, and that's with our students, but also in our professional lives too. People are more stressed, more unhealthy, you know, it's like people are a mess. Well, and also healthcare (laughs) providers, I think sometimes we exclude ourselves from the general population just because... I don't know. I feel like a lot of times when I talk about a topic of burnout, you know, doctors roll their eyes or physicians roll their eyes, you know, maybe one of them being someone I live with every day. Um, <laughs> but, but it's, it's really true. I mean, we're not excluded from the general population of the workforce. And I no. think, you know, we work so hard, we hustle so hard to get into the residency, to get into the top master's program, to get into the doctorate level courses. And, 
And then to land that dream job and to continue to publish and research and, you know, do all the things that sometimes we exclude ourselves from, hey, we're actually people too um, Mm -hmm. that need support. And I think bringing up these topics and talking about greediness and resilience and perseverance and when to say no and when to say yes and mindfulness and, and doing the things like these woo-woo things or foo-foo, whatever we want to call it, it's actually, this is like data proven that this stuff works. (laughs) Yeah. I, I love that we're talking about the sensitive subject, which I don't know why it's sensitive because so many people are affected by it. There's no one really talks about it. It's kind of like the silent killer. it's a vulnerable thing. Yeah, you're it's right. a vulnerable yeah. thing. When you when you when you come out there and you say, "Look, like I need a break from my own mental health." There's a certain like fear that you're going to be perceived as weak. Totally. Right? Yes. That that you're going to be perceived that you can't hang. When really like you're the brave one and you're the smart one and you're mm-hmm. the one who's self-aware. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? I mean, I talk I talk to my students about this. I say like there's sort of like this badge of honor of people who like don't sleep much. Like people talk about not sleeping. Like it's like some sort of like status symbol. Like, That's Oh, so I can only crazy. function on like four hours of sleep or I cannot, you know, Is or I got really all this thing? done. And I'm, That's a thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you don't ever hear stuff like that. <laughs> well, I, mean, I guess when, I guess when, when we were in residency and you know, we took 24 hour call. And so we, yeah, you're right. No, 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 you're right. But I just can't imagine you're right. No, just like, or, or just overnight or who got more things overnight. <laughs> yeah. Look at me or people who like work crazy hours. Yeah, like, Oh, like right. I'm sending you emails at 10 PM, 12 PM. Look how dedicated I am. Look how right. hard I work. Insanity. But I know. But then my question is, why aren't you getting all your stuff done during your work there? Are you not efficient? <laughs> Maybe you need to be more efficient in your job and yeah. maybe you need to, well, you're a weirdo. Where's your personal life? You know what, you know? Neil, uh, I just listened to our podcast this morning. He was on a couple weeks ago and he is one of the co-founders of Bainbridge Health. Um, and he, cause he's like part of a startup company and he precisely brought up that topic of, you know, me being a part of a start, him being part of a startup. Everyone's like, Oh, do you work 18, 22 hour days? And he's like, no, that's crazy. Why would I do that? And a matter of fact, if I were doing that, there's something efficiently not working in our business model. So I love that you brought that up because it's totally a true statement and it's a sentiment. And I remember being in, when I was in training, when I was in school, like this person who stayed at the library the longest or a person who stayed at the hospital the most hours was like, cool. (laughs) I'm like, really? I want to go out and I don't know, do something fun. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and you know, you brought up a good point too, that a lot of this comes from our leaders. Yeah. Right. True. So, so if you have leadership that isn't really focused on wellness and right. productivity, and I mean, I was sort of brought up in that, that mode. My residency program director, I mean, God love him <laughs> and I love him, but he would send us emails at like three, four in the morning. And we just kind of thought that's how life was from now on, you know? And after being in this role for 10 years, you kind of like start to say like, whoa, like this isn't really how it should be. I think having kids changes you too. Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, the only reason why I'm up at 1 a.m. or maybe 11 p.m. or maybe sometimes 9 p.m. is because Madeline's awake. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah having, I mean, there's, there's many ways to like get your priorities straight, but having kids is probably one of the fastest. <laughs> I agree. Um, okay, so you know what? I realized that we really kind of skimmed over what you do in the college or in the, the school of pharmacy. So maybe giving a little bit more background about kind of what classes you do teach on and your, um, your practice. Yeah. So my, my clinical practice is actually pain management. So I've been doing pain management for 10 years and that's definitely an area where you got to be, well, you don't have to have a high level of empathy, but it really helps. Empathy Um, was the first word that came to my mind when you said some, when you said that, I was like, have a lot of it. Yeah. But you know, what's interesting is that a lot of these concepts kind of like tie. Yeah tie in really well with my work in pain management because Uh there's like, there's like this sort of like, you know, giving empathetic sense of like wanting to relieve suffering. (laughs) But then at the same time, you've got to know where to draw the line. Right. Right. And um, so I I find themes that are very similar in my clinical practice, my personal life, and also in teaching and my work with students. Right. 
So the things that I teach at the school, obviously I teach all the pain management content in the curriculum, but what I actually enjoy probably even more is the soft skills. So I, I run courses called pharmacy practice and professionalism in the first year. It was the first three years, but now we've dialed it back to the first year. And that's sort of the home to where we dig into all these topics. We, we could do a better job if we had more time. Um, but we, we, we tackle a lot of these things that we're talking about today. At least, at least we plant the seed with the students. Mm -hmm. I, I think I would need a, probably a whole entire course dedicated to this um, to really get in deep with them. Mm -hmm. um, but at least we introduce it. And I think that some of our in-class discussions and introductions to the topic at least changes their thinking in, in some ways. Yeah. Um, so. I think at least bringing the topic up is better than never before you know ne they've never heard of something like this before which is progress in my mind yeah. and kudos yeah. to you for taking the initiative because um i guess something about what i share in common with you is doing anything new doing some talking about new topics um yeah i don't know changing anything sometimes especially when you're in a large facility or in your large company or university or whatever that may be, who has been doing the same things over and over and over again for decades and years, forever, <laughs> before you even got there, before I got there, before internet was even around. Um, now we're bringing change into any of this. It's, it's hard. It's a hard path to walk down. But here's the thing. Topics like this, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to take advantage of this platform, Part of, the per part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network is to talk about these exact things because we have a platform of like, I think Todd told me 70, 68,000 subscribers that listen to this network. We have to talk about this more in our profession. We have to talk about mental health, not only for our patients, which is obviously why a lot of people go into the profession is to help patients, but hello, what about us? What about the students? Yeah. What about the pharmacists? What about the physicians who are getting burned out, who are getting drained, stressed, underpaid, all of the things? It's really time, I think, that we take a stand. And I think having you on the show, Melissa, is just one way to show audience that we are talking about it. We are trying to do things about it. Now, I would love for the listeners to reach out and say, what are you doing? What have you taken away from this conversation that you can either build grittiness on, be resilient with, or um, learn to start saying, learn, learn, to, learn the process of strategically saying yes and no to things, not taking too much on. What do you think about that? To me? Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I, definitely, I definitely think so. I think that, the, that it's time for us to all, like, have, a, get, have quiet moments with ourselves and really reevaluate what our values are, who we are as a person. And then determine where it's worth dedicating our time and energy and our hearts and then putting our passion there. If you, you know? had this all the time in the world, and you know, obviously we're going to start wrapping up here soon on the podcast, but if you had all the time in the world to just say one thing about building resilience or building grittiness, like what would you want to preach to the audience about um, something that they can maybe take away from regarding their professional, professional and personal life? The so one thing I would say, if you have a passion for something, do whatever you take, you can't do whatever it takes to see it through. Okay. Find your passion, see it through, but always have like a touchstone, a touchstone in who you are, what your values are and recognize the things that are inconsistent with who you are and your values and recognize when those things aren't worthy of pursuing. Wow. That's impressive. Thank you for coming <laughs> on the show, Melissa. Um, it really means a lot to me just to have these open, powerful conversations. Not a lot of people are talking about this. Most people are talking about how to get residencies and, you know, how to land the, the dream jobs and all the stuff. But this is half of the battle is having the appropriate mindset. Mm -hmm. So we can have other discussions about this topic, but honestly, I just want to thank you for your time. I think um, the pharmacy school, the school of pharmacy, USC specifically, but the profession of pharmacy is lucky to have someone like you. And I'm not just saying that to you because I took an hour of your time this morning. I'm saying that because we need more people like you who are talking about things that 
not a lot of people are talking about and are uncomfortable, like you said, that are vulnerable. And I just give you the biggest kudos possible. And if you want to get in touch with Melissa or you want to um, reach out to her to, t- to talk about these sensitive subject topics, I will make sure to leave um, all of her information in our show notes. But without further ado, thank you, Melissa, for joining us. I just love you and I appreciate everything you're doing for me, the school, and for the profession. Thanks. Love you too. <laughs> Thanks for having me. This was just the beginning. If this was your first time listening to the RX Buzz, we welcome you and thank you for giving us a chance. And if you're an old friend, one of our subscribers, we cherish you and look forward to hearing from you. And now we need your help. We ask that you share this podcast with just one person you know who's in the healthcare industry. If this podcast can help just one person, we believe it will have a chain reaction, having an impact on dozens, hundreds, thousands, and someday, millions of people. Thank you for your help. We truly appreciate you. And thank you for listening to the RX Buzz, part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network.